Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode four of talking about the RPF and our personal demons and the scene in general. I am joined once again by Brian Babbage and super special guest Chris Reif, who is a longtime RPFer, uh, professional Star Wars illustrator, author, etc. cetera. Uh, so welcome to the show. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Yeah, no, this is awesome. I, I I think I've messaged you guys pretty much every time you've done one of these, just how how much it makes me giddy inside. Yeah, yeah. Thinking back on on the old days. Yeah, it opens up a lot of a lot of uh, weird memories and stuff. And by the way, as Brian had said when we when we started uh, shortly before starting the the recording, you have the coolest background ever. Like you are coming to us literally from your hangar, correct? Well, yeah. I my my to toy hoarding has gotten a little out of control so <laughs> i needed more space for bigger and better toys sure yeah yeah it's it's uh it's a struggle isn't it yeah <laughs> well, but it, it works great it's a it's a shop too i mean i've got workbenches and all my tools and yeah presses and expansion space for cnc machines and whatever else i want to throw in here so and the, the eagle-eyed viewer will see your r2d2 in the background so there are two r2d2s on this call <laughs> He's back yeah. yeah 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 one yeah, is like expertly done the other one is just sitting there for show that would be fun. yeah we, have, we need to get yours driving around yeah yeah but you and i are gonna have to talk about this because i'm i'm now getting serious about it i'm ready to throw some money into this and and time well that's that's all it takes <laughs> all the money and all That's the time <laughs> all of your money and all right. of your time but I also but, i also love that you have a couch, the couch there, there. Yeah. there's there's literally a couch behind you like you can be sitting there and just touch your oh, airplane yeah. like you have to back that thing up to your your sofa that's so rad well, yeah it's a small enough plane that there's room in here for i mean for this electronics bench i'm at the tv and the liquor cabinet yes <laughs> everything a pilot needs before takeoff. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay, so tell us um, a little bit about how you found the RPF, uh, when you found the RPF, your trajectory as a fan to professional working in licensing or licensed uh, you know, media for Star Wars. And, um, and, a, and as an aside, a lot of you guys probably don't know, but he is one of the two guys behind the Parts of Star Wars website, which was and is like just a like cornerstone of prop replica building yeah well yeah it's man uh <laughs> it's not quite the the archive that we have wanted to maintain it's just life has gotten in the way of upkeep really on it yeah we, we transitioned over to facebook just because it was easier to handle stuff and let people converse about things yeah there uh the website which well, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. So if I go back in time, like the Star Wars nerd in me started like everybody else. I, we're the same age, so I'm 48. Yeah, uh, yeah. So had essentially the same experience. Like the first memory I have of seeing Star Wars is the re-release, I think in 80. Um, and, but it, it was all, all in after that, like all the toys, <laughs> everything. Um, and then like most people, like it, it kind of like there was the downturn in the in the late '80s when we didn't have much other than the Ewoks and <laughs> and, and the C3PO's in, in your grocer's aisle. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. But uh, college, the the Thrawn books came back out, and man, when as soon as those hit, like you could say goodbye to that class day. Like, yeah. <laughs> take the day off, like. Lay in the bunk and and read through a book, and at the same time, like that's when um, Kenner had started to kind of start the figure thing back up. So there was this kind of huge resurgence in Star Wars energy then. Yeah. Um, Do you remember the first thing you could get in the toy aisle after all those years of of Star shopping? Yeah, the the bendums that, that like like, and I bought it and I was so stoked. I was so excited, uh, and they're awful. They were, I mean, like, I found one ages ago, but it had been in storage for years and it had gotten gummy and weird. Oh, and like, yeah, I'll have to check mine. I, mine are in a box in a pod somewhere in Ohio. Yeah. Transitioning up here to Rhode Island now. But 
um yeah it's it was so it was such a fun time to be kind of an older fan yeah like there were things were happening like there were those those vinyl figures that you could get at suncoast of like mm-hmm. she's door and like shadows of the empire was coming back out and crazy muscly figures which are so bizarre but man i still i still have a set of them that yeah. first wave of kenner re-release stuff yeah that real like like kind of like monkey faced leia she was like we're like yeah, and like bare chested luke and yeah, yeah. <laughs> very he-man uh, yeah. but like all that stuff like just kind of that resurgence of star wars energy was in my life at the time and i had gotten into into the props and like was always kind of into the behind the scenes thing i think you and tom talked about that a yeah. little like there were those like classic creatures and the making of of star wars and empire strikes back videos and while i was in college i bought myself a laser disc player like took out a loan <laughs> like had my mom co-sign for me and stuff <laughs> to get a laser disc player in a a 32 inch tube tv which yeah. was an ungodly beast but it was also because at the same time like the 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 movies had come back out on laserdisc like the the big deluxo box set that had archive tour and stuff yeah i i had a friend with a laserdisc player and he he like blew my brain open because you could pause it frame by frame at least right. you hope you know, and like, what were lasers? Were they like nine hundred dollars or something? They seemed so crazy expensive. They were. Like, they were more expensive. I want to say that box set was like three hundred bucks. Yeah, maybe, for yeah. the box. I he was the same guy who had the Twin Peaks box set, which I coveted because you could buy it on VHS, and I had it on VHS. But to save time or space or whatever, they recorded everything past the pilot two-hour movie weird thing on uh like slp so it was like six hours per tape so the quality like the all the red room you know like it was just the reds were blown out and on laserdisc it looked beautiful and i just remembered like coveting the star yeah. wars and twin peaks discs especially yeah, that laserdisc that set because don don bees took a tour of the archive as part of one of the special features of that set yeah and like now you can go on youtube and download it in 20 seconds but yeah. Like then, like that was precious material, and it was like, in the the laser discs are weird, and like there's two ways you can record them, like constant angular velocity and constant linear velocity. So like in one of them you can freeze frame real real nice and get better quality photos, and the other you can't. And that set was done in the the fancy way. Hmm. So I remember just like frame by frame going through the archive stuff and and looking at things, and even back then like brain like on fire just trying to figure out what stuff was yeah and and then it was somewhere in there after that probably or around that same time like the whole like discovery like everyone else that like the graphlex was luke's lightsaber and like i don't know whether that was reading some old star log thing or random other sci-fi rag but like did that and went and found the graphlex for 90 bucks or 100 bucks whatever it was back then yeah. Back then, it was it was the early days, but still, like camera shops would have them, but they would also know that they were Star Wars. It was like a weird. Yeah, I remember I got one for twenty five bucks because it was like, and it was in kind of meh condition, um, like it had you know dings on it or whatever or scratches on the surface. And uh, then I remember seeing a really nice one that was yeah, like close to two hundred bucks. I think the guy knew the jig was up. Clearly, yeah. because he asked me, he's like, what are you doing with this? And I, I, I lied and said, I have a press camera that was my father's or grandfather's or whatever. And I just, and it didn't have the flash. So I wanted to like make them up together. And I think it's the right, you know, I don't think it's a graph light. I think it's a graph flex and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, okay. You know, like, <laughs> I, I, I feel like some of those guys wouldn't sell it to you if they knew you were going to right you know, metal with it which is just like all right whatever right. Model guys. money is you're trying to buy like 1940s cameras yeah yeah, yeah. Something's Ma- off. Ma- Ma- camera, is it- camera guys are really cagey about that they were and i remember back in the day they were very protective of wanting camera parts to be used for cameras and if they got a, a hint that you were something in you know interested in it as a prop you know like star wars because that had spread around the entire camera community yeah they were really, really uh, off put by you yeah. as a person. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the uh, early days, like, yeah. Uh, now, yeah. Early days. yeah. Now we've decimated cameras 
for all sorts of things. <laughs> yeah, another quick aside that happens to this day with with model kits. Like it, there are some sellers and collectors who, if they know you're going to not build the tank or I guess stick it on the shelf until your widow has to take care of it, um, they won't sell to you. <laughs> so the Graflex, um, and then it somehow it's around the time that that How to Build a Lightsaber book, Lightsaber book came out. That, um, was that Chris Pappas? I think so. That's amazing. I don't even remember where I got it. Yeah. Well, actually, maybe Travis sent it to me. So, the, like, this time frame in my prop world is is weird and filled with lots of swirl. Um, and, and you're but, referencing a book that looks more like a book report. Oh, it's... Like, it's like 20 pages of Xerox copies. Like it's eight like the vid phone report. You know, it's yeah, like yeah. a pamphlet like, more than anything else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's got like the, the clear plastic cover and the little slidey binder. Oh, my that. Didn't have that because I think it did come from Travis. Um, but it was it was just like Xerox copies and a staple in the corner. Like okay. it was was it a recast? It probably was. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um but so I was I was monitoring, but not super active in the in the news groups mm -hmm. for props at the time, which was kind of like the one place you could go to talk about stuff. And what was it like rec.arts.starwars.sci-fi.props or something crazy? Like <laughs> this is this is like AOL days, like or, or I think or this is even pre AOL. AOL. Wow. Yeah. Copy server. What was that thing? I forget. Earthlink. Yeah. Earthlink. Earthlink. Yeah. <laughs> Like that. Yeah, and it was prodigy. It was the it was watching those boards and kind of like figuring out some stuff, and that's when everybody was talking like windshield washer or wipers and stuff. And yeah, and I I sent a note into that news group like, hey, does anybody have the info on how to convert this Graflex to a lightsaber? And Travis was the first person to respond wow. to my like into the sky like news group post. Wow. And then that's where he and I met was over that. And like, uh, man, that was probably 96. And you're in Ohio? I was in Ohio. He's where up is in, he? He's up in, in the greater Detroit area. Okay. Um, so we weren't super far away from each other, but this is like, I had just gotten out of college when all this is kind of going on, or it's like right around that same time. And I, I had gotten a job um, straight out of school working for a design consultancy, product design consultancy. And they were guys that did the original Star Wars toys for Kenner that had, huh. that had left Kenner, gone off on their own. And it was the three of them and me at this company, wow. um, which was just like mind blowing at the time. Like I'm a college kid who's like nerdy over new Star Wars stuff. I'm like, hey, I'm going to what? You guys did what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did they have good war stories? Oh, there's amazing war stories and like yeah. like that the booklet of the pitch material to like take the Lucasfilm after Star Wars or after Return of the Jedi. Like, where are we gonna go with like all the like crazy ships and the yeah, uh, like the the droid like couple together droid stuff. companions and stuff? Yeah, and, yeah. And like the modified ad at with the big Death Star gun on the back, all that yeah. stuff. Like, they were the guys that like put that book together. Like Jim Swearingen, like is is yeah. It, in the episode of the toys that made us yeah the yeah thing. like they have an actor pretending to be jim walking around <laughs> and then jim's in there but like those three guys were like hugely influential for me Where, was boudreaux one of them or was he still no, with no kenner he, or hasbro or whatever yeah mark never left kenner or hasbro like okay okay so he was there for 40 some years i think yeah but wow he uh but through those guys like because they did it all back in the day. Like Jim used to go for product approvals at Lucas's breakfast table at his house. Like, <laughs> but That's nuts. they knew, they knew everybody in the, in the industry. Like, and I got into the professional star Wars world through them. Mm. But at this, at the same time, like this prop things going on as hobby for me. Right. And Travis and I got together and like instantly it was like the snowball of, Oh, Hey, like, like sharing ideas back and forth and like talking about what parts went into things like the graphics was like the spawn of all of it and then it turned into like other things and like chasing down whatever we could find old yeah. electronic shops and travis and i needed it was it was getting out of hand like we couldn't keep it straight 
in emails or whatever we form of communication we had then. Yeah. So we, we decided we were going to start just an online like folder basically that he and I could like dump stuff in to share. Cool. Cause there was no Dropbox or anything. It was like, Oh, Hey, well, I've got this, this account that lets me set up a website, but I can just make it a folder and you can log yeah, in and look at F FTP <laughs> with transmit or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So we started that, but then it turned into, okay, well, there's too much stuff in here. Let's, let's put it on a page and like, and that's where parts of Star Wars came from. And that was like 96. Yeah. Like super early stuff. And sometime in the middle of us doing parts of Star Wars, we discovered Brandon's old site where it was just like text and a couple links to some, some photos. Yeah. And Brandon was doing the same sort of thing. Like often Brandon's universe that we didn't know anything about. Right. But it was like this perfect conjunction of, oh, holy shit. Like, <laughs> like every, there's other people into this too. Like, so. You don't get this perspective until time passes. But, you know, you think about like, uh, you think about your favorite band and like how every year they recorded an album. And you wonder like, how, how, does, how does that happen in such a short span of time? Like, you know, you yeah. can think about like, where did the Beatles go from like 63 to 69? Like, it's insane. And like, when you think about the, the, the whole scene, the whole hobby, the ground that was broken and the things that were built on that foundation from like, you said like 95, 96 to like 99, 2000, it, it is mind blowing. Like, it really is, yeah. It's just, it exploded. And it was like, it was hard to keep up with everything. It was. And that's, I mean, for us, that was what parts of Star Wars was, was a way to like keep track of the crazy that was happening. Cause then yeah. like, like there was like, we didn't know, like we like through like finding Brandon's site and like the news groups, like we, we were figuring out that other people were into the same like nerdy closet material that we were into yeah. and like decided like, okay, let's open up the, like let's just share the link for parts of Star Wars. And both of us being designers and, I mean, I was a, I went to school for graphic design and painting and was working as a product designer. Travis was always working as an illustrator. Right. And we decided like, we were going to like make it a visual thing and kind of like lay out the nerd just <laughs> on the screen. And, and it like that, I think that took off a little bit there and people started referencing it. And like, even today, like if I go like searching for work like oh i need a stormtrooper blaster like i'll instantly find ancient parts of star wars images that we edited with early versions of photoshop yeah yeah i it, because of because of your i think it's because of your site i i knew that the gaffy stick was a fijian war club like to tokyo or to yeah. I, I don't know how, how you pronounce that if i'm doing it wrong i apologize to all the fijians out there um but like it was it the, Fijians or is it Fijians? I'm not, ah, I don't know, I'm man. Ah. Them calling them by the wrong name. Oh, Christ. Uh, yeah. Um, but like it, it, it uh, to this day, I will do the same thing. I will, I will go look for something and I'm like, oh, well, I'll just check parts of Star Wars real quick because it's probably there. You know, you go by the character and then you go do, 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 find the thing. Yeah. I just, I did full, that. Full transparency, <laughs> the website version of parts of Star Wars is so far out of date and some things some things like we knew solid back then but yeah yeah I mean, but but i mean it's it's the nostalgic like sort of reflex motion i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna go there i only because like i was researching re 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 researching refreshing i guess is a better way to put it the training remote and i'm mm -hmm. like I, I wonder if they have all that stuff like <laughs> i remember when all that was being worked out and it was mostly frank cerny's work i believe yeah and he he did a whole section for us on parts of star wars of the remote yeah it was great awesome. photos yeah stuff. i saw that it, it was like that was a cool trip and it was like you know he's, and he's in the air force you know had like the little byline at the bottom it was very cool um but i was like i remember at the time thinking i want to gather all this stuff to make one uh but the truck rims oh man that kit's too, it's just too expensive and I think you need two of them and they're chrome and I just always plan to like get them cast in resin and spray paint them or something and then the master replicas version came out and I had that for like 10 years on my shelf and then sold it when it was like too good to not sell it and now I've got the itch to like build one from scratch again and it's just so funny like I had everything I need in my 
like hoard of stuff. Like I don't have to buy a single thing. I have the six inch plastruck spheres and that moving on truck. I've got like seven of them. I was like, I went from maybe I can borrow one of the rims to I have seven full kits. Like that's how insane things have gotten in the past 20 years with, with my like, you know, gathering, hunting and gathering or whatever. Hoarding. Oh, hoarding. it's hoarding. Yeah. 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 Now it's a bathtub full of rims. Yeah. 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 Just actually, yeah. I, I think I'm going to hook Quincy up because I, I think he needs some. And I'm like, I'm, I don't think those rims are on anything else. Like, you know, I'll, I'll probably the next day be like, I need 12 of them for this thing. And be, damn it. Yeah. But, uh, some new discovery somebody will make. Yeah. 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 yeah my, I still have a somewhere around here. It's probably, yeah. I don't know. I can't find it, but um, I still have a training remote kit that I got from Frank, a casting wow. from Frank. Yeah. With rim. Rotocast, which was mind blowing. Yeah. yeah. I was like, wow, yeah. it's hollow. And he sent he sent me a set of rims and then there were little pieces that were missing and not ID'd at the time that later got ID'd that he sent me a set of castings for. Yeah. For <laughs> the material, all of it. Like that was... never I've never put it together. It's like my Graflex. Like the Graflex is the first thing I bought and it has still not been converted. <laughs> it's so crazy. Matt ha talked about the multi-pass and he never built one for himself. I was cleaning the shop and I found a bunch of castings of the Death Star Tower and I like realized I, I never I, I built a bunch for a couple people I, I, you know I did the pad repatterned it when I restored part of the original for uh, one of the ILM guys because it was you know like how often do you have something sitting on your desk for a couple weeks you know like I, well, I, I'm not going to charge anything but I'm going to replicate the hell out of this and he's like I don't care um, but uh, like I didn't do one for myself like we it's staggering to me how okay. like you do all this work and then you don't you know do one for you yeah you know it's weird but well, yeah if, if you ever do a small run of things I, I think that I mean that's happened to me tons of times where I would do a small run and get stuff out the door and then you get that one person who goes hey do you happen to have one more yeah and I'm like looking at my desk I'm like yeah yeah, yeah okay no yeah at least i was proud that i kept a couple of the because the molds are long gone i was pleased that i kept a, a small amount of the castings for myself because i wanted to make like a bunch of towers and i was like all right but um that's so you gotta have one on each corner of your coffee table under the glass to right right this one's the tan one this one's the one that's not as tall as that one yeah actually what i really want to make is the um deflection tower which is like covered in model kit parts and that's one of those things where like you see it for a couple seconds, and that's the thing that Porkins hits and then bites it, I think. And, uh, and, and it's got animated like lightning all over it in the film. So it's kind of hard to figure it out. And I was like, I'm, I'll just riff. I'll, I'll try to make it as cool as I can because there's just no reference. And then uh, Chris Cassidy shows up uh and he's the stereo <laughs> photos of it. Yeah, yeah he took all these, he took all these amazing photos of himself painting with light you know, uh, with a time lapse, but in the foreground, because he was, you know, like making a composition at the same time, is that tower in beautiful crystal clarity. And in the back, he's like sort of shadowy and he's like drawing a pattern. And it's a beautiful shot. It's a nice photo. Right. And he's <laughs> moving the light around it just perfectly to like all the little kit parts. It's yeah. so crazy. That's what I love about like a lot of these pictures is they were taking a photo of something else. But the thing I really wanted that angle of is like, just it's like sitting on the shelf or it's like, you know, just sort of so yeah, that stop right was just right to get that and <sighs> yeah. so it is it for people who aren't into this kind of stuff i don't know how to describe the rush because to them they're like what and i'm like no you don't understand like it's something that you're like it, it is literally a time machine that mm -hmm. you like there, there can't be a photo of the the death star crane like there just can't and there have been three in the last like it's like five years maybe maybe 10 I don't know time's kind of sliding by but like I built one and then immediately right Chris, well, Chris was like, I, I, I Chris had that know. shot <laughs> it was yeah. like god damn it yeah so it was all oh, yeah yeah oh yeah. I've got a photo of the the original the, the worst was the Blade Runner blimp which I built 10 years ago funny enough uh and the, the week the week I finished the main construction and was working on like painting and weathering Tr Doug Trumbull put his website online and there is a side view, like a perfect side view of the thing showing where Bravo. I misinterpreted yeah. like one of the dips in the, the, the sort of like form of the blimp itself. 
and I, I wanted to walk into traffic. I was so pumped. I was like, damn, damn it. So right. it know. went from being a beautiful masterpiece to like the worst piece of trash you've ever built. Yeah. 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 I, I got over it, but uh, ion cannons the same way. I just, you know, like finished, we were talking about that. In fact, we all, all three of us and some other guys hung out uh, this summer in Connecticut and I brought all the reference that I had been able to gather and, uh, and some model kit parts that I knew were on it, hoping that other parts on other trees or sprues would be in it. And you and Ed just disappeared into your own world for like, I don't know, three quarters of a hours. day. It was hours. hours. Yeah. And, and it was so funny because we would go hang out and drink or whatever and come back and you two guys, like we'd come up the stairs and you were staring at the screen, holding something up. I'm like, do you think it could be? No, oh, I don't, you know, like, and I was like, this is, this is beautiful. And we all pitched in a little bit, but you guys were like in it to win it. And you found a shocking amount of stuff. And those, that is the hardest model to try to glean information oh, okay. off of with what has, you know, like changed on its surface. But the, yeah. the second I finished, you know, and I, the way I did the, the pattern, I left a lot of it blank and just said to anybody who wants to make one, just riff, you know, because we don't know. But I was fully convinced the second I finished it, uh, somebody like an old Kenner employee would be like, here's turnarounds from 1980, you know, or 79. Cause that's the only way we're going to ever be able to probably nail that one. If there's gotta be, somebody did turnarounds, right? I mean, yeah, you think? I, would, I would think so. I mean, Somewhere there's a medium format stack that just hasn't been scanned yet or whatever. Yeah. I mean, they shot really great turnarounds of pretty much every model from empire, like in black and white, like good quality with ruler across, the, the ruler across it yeah, yeah i can't imagine that one got through that without getting photos taken but i've never seen them so uh, yeah i always love the the cloud car pictures that have the copyright 1979 on the piece of paper yeah I, was was that sent to kenner I, it was just weird they had this copyright like no other thing has that i don't think i it might it might have been i'm not yeah. sure yeah because i there, there were a bunch of pictures of the uh the Nebulon B, the, the medical ship or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, that have scratches through it. Yeah, the razor blade. Yeah, they, yeah. So you yeah. couldn't use them in print. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but they're, they're and great now it's like magic wand eraser, like gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Well, and nowadays when you get reference, it's as you know, it's it's uh, watermarked to hell and back to the point where you can't see half the detail sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a different yeah. world. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I. It's crazy. I mean, just thinking about the old days too, where it was like, like whatever book came out was just a miracle. Yeah. Because of the new photos in it. Like when Chronicles came out in Japan. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was on the phone ordering a Japanese copy of that book. Yeah. Hang it over. Like, I don't even remember how, like, I think it was in the insider, like a little photo in the back of the insider saying like, Hey, new book in Japan. Yeah. And like, yeah brain on fire like i went and found <laughs> way in japan to to get that and had it shipped over yeah to, to speak to the reference stuff like these no, yeah, this I, book, yeah, like, I, like i saw spines of them go past the bottom of the frame and i knew what they all were yeah yeah nuts and sweet the yeah, sand sweets book so now was this generated for um this was was this just him making a book or it wasn't for like a show or an exhibit, was it? No, that, yeah, that was just, that was just a book just, about Star Wars stuff. Just a cool book. But I mean, it had, it had stuff in it that like we had these in the sketchbook, but like all that was new to me. And you get like, there's like the spine, the perfect bindings, like just shot. Right. Because you've laid it on the scanner 60 times to. Yeah. And then this was the Hada oh. exhibit essentially, right? Yeah. 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 There, yeah. And and this book, a lot of people, I mean, this was definitely an RPF, like, must have. It, it had all the, had a lot of prop pictures, and it had handy uh, um, measurements, well, which I don't think are accurate half the time. Well, and that, that book happened kind of after the initial, like, RPF and prop movement was really going on, because I think a lot of the stuff that got photographed for that book ended up like in rubber molds and like copies of it out and about and like just weird and the, the the this one this book i don't think a lot of people know of it's the actual figure uh, archive yeah that's a great one yeah and this is the for the longest time it was the only way for you to see this gorgeous large shot of the uh empire version of the empire yeah 
And like, I remember opening this up, seeing that shot and being like, oh my God. I mean, that's one of the privileges of having done this stuff for so long. And, and really, uh, I mean, I do credit the RPF in a way for, for just the critical thinking and like deep diving into the nuances of stuff. I think like that has informed the way I approach a lot of, a lot of that recreation thing. Yeah. And that project was about being as completely authentic as we could be. Like we sat in the archives in 3d modeled stuff. So it based off of measurements that we were able to gain there and scans of things we were taking. So it was and and things that, like getting a perspective and like sticking your head up in the bottom of a Kenny Baker aluminum R2 from New Hope and being able to look at how things are riveted and welded in there and, and stuff that while it doesn't, it, it informs the aesthetic on the outside. It's not, it's not critical that like it's welded this way or it's riveted together here, but understanding that construction process informs your, your knowledge and ability to interpret what you're seeing on the outside of it. I mean, it's like my R2 sitting back here, like he's, I mean, he's light years beyond what they built in 76 in a way, because like I can go up to mine and I can kick him. And if you did that, <laughs> one of those ones back then it would just like crumple and like roll down the hill. Like, <laughs> but it, they were, they were built for a different purpose than mine was built for. Yeah. But trying to make it look the same on the outside and function differently like that access i mean if i was going to build my r2 now i'd build them totally different knowing what i've what i've seen and discovered since building mine <laughs> but it, it's not doing that not again <laughs> no, you're not making another one um it's funny that you, the, the way you phrased that earlier, it, it is almost as if the RPF taught us all our own like scientific method for sussing out the, the hows and whys and sequence of successfully doing something. Yeah. Like the IDs, the thorough research, the, the missteps. I mean, have yeah. you, is there, do you have like a white whale and is there something that you like messed up so badly that to this day you're like, God, why did I like, I wish I could have done that differently. Um, Does anything haunt you? Uh, Tell me your darkest fears, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What does haunt me? Yeah. Um, man, I'm sorry. I'm looking down here cause I have a giant stack of unfinished prop projects right here. <laughs> Literally uh, at your feet. Literally at my feet. Yeah, here's a box that says Luke, A New Hope macros, DL44s, Death Star security cameras, Back to the Future remote. You're such a slacker. Yeah. Bowcaster, visible V8 box, mm -hmm. Obi-Wan lightsaber, all. Um, <laughs> uh, man, I don't, I don't know that there's any particular thing that's a white whale anymore. I feel like, man. you the, slain all the dragons? Well, I feel there probably is. It's just not, it's not burning a hole in my soul like they used to. Um, I feel like the, like through the RPF and other groups, like we've I, ID'd like all the major pieces Yeah. that like prop stuff. I mean, there are some things I didn't think we'd ever find that like, hey, there it is. And, <laughs> and like sitting right here, like, soap dispensers oh my god that thing ha dogged you guys for like 20 years i feel like that was yeah. such a mystery and then it's then it's on the bathroom walls in firefox when clint eastwood's taking out a russian guy like, is that how it got identified yeah yeah Where, was it you like was no, some, no, no. somebody's watching firefox and they were like wait a minute yeah like, holy cow that's great yeah and then and then we managed to track down a whole supply of them. I was going to say, and then you bought the world supply of vintage soap dispensers. But they were like in Switzerland or something. And I love it. And Marcus from the RPF like managed to go work a deal because he speaks, he lives in Germany and yeah. can haggle in German, which That's great. I'm not remotely capable of doing. <laughs> that said, that is a perfect RPF anecdote, though. Yeah. I mean, that's. Like, like that sort of stuff. It's just, it's so weird. It's like, okay, soap dispensers. Like, yeah. and who knows like 
how that came about. I mean, there are things I, there are things I would love to have an original of, uh, well, an original piece like the Simrads that are the Luke's yeah the electro binoculars. I'd love to have a real set of Simrads, but I'm not willing to spend multiple grand to get them when I have a casting off an original. Like, right, right. And yeah. there, are, there are things that are. I mean, here's another one. This is, I mean, my Han Solo blaster that's built off of real stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, I love it. Like it. And I think the it's part of what everybody in the RPF was looking for is is a way to connect with the universe of star wars or yeah or hellboy or whatever they're into like there's there's something practical about getting your hands on these things and like touching and knowing oh man harrison ford carried one of these on his hip this thing's yeah. heavy. What is it? well and also it, it it's it's an artifact it, it's a it's a conduit to your childhood it, it just looks cool right. i mean because we love the aesthetic but it also really does sim- symbolize like like the teamwork that went into it. Like, I mean, I do look at things fondly. Like when I see a training remote, you know, I think like, oh, that work that Frank did. And then like the training remote also has that that lovely like drama associated with it that some of these things seem to have. Like uh, the Master Replicas version um, copied Frank's best guess part for, I think it, I don't know if it was the cupola or something. It was one of the model kit parts. He hadn't quite ID'd, and it's probably the one you were talking about where you got, uh, you know, like the right one later. And it might have been off the Bondi 148th Panther, maybe. Um, but Matt faithfully copied that into the MR replica. And then it was almost like a, a, a unexpected tell for Frank. And there was like, you know, a whole little blow up about that. Like, you know, you just use right. my shit as product development or whatever. Um, but uh yeah and i i feel like there's and if i don't cut that out i'm bleeping the hell out of all that (laughs) well i feel like there's the whole recasting thing that i mean it feels to me like that kind of came out of the rpf and like people trying to own things Mm -hmm. that weren't really theirs to own yeah it's like i mean you're making a copy of a thing from star wars and trying to claim it as yours like like the work you put into it and stuff that's like yes like not to take anything away from that, but you're trying to like claim whatever it is as your thing. Yeah. When I feel like the community in general has done so much better and progressed more when people are sharing and going here, here's the thing I did. Yep. Like, yeah. Yeah. And the, like the, open sharing and collaboration like is what made the RPF so great back in the day. Agreed. And, Agreed. The luxury of sort of got getting as far as we've gotten with the, original content creators relaxes you a lot when they don't like worry so much about the insane hyper accuracy of something if it's right. if it's fluid you know like it's that moving target where where like that part fell off and they put a new one on so which part do i use like you just gotta pick one and sleep at night yeah 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 and uh well you and tom talked about that too like uh, i think he was talking about it on the rancor like painting yeah. like yeah. you can't if you're if your goal is to replicate it like that's find another hobby because you're never going to yeah and it's it's like and that becomes like almost like art forgery and it's like i'm not into that i want to yeah. you know like the there's so much like consternation yeah. usually with the newer people just because they don't have i feel like they don't have the self-assuredness necessarily to just be like this is how i'm going to approach the hobby like they're they're like still sort of finding their way which is totally valid but like uh you know like uh what color what paint you know like how do i do this and and i we know we know a guy who's been running around for 20 years trying to figure out paint colors and and you know every single post you see is oh here's this is what they did this was the primer this was this then this was that but for for the love of God, it, he's never built anything, as far as I know. Well, right? Yeah. I mean, well, so I feel like, like these things get in the way of progression. Perfect, yes. Perfection yeah. is the enemy of completion, and it's yes, a hundred percent. I know multiple guys that have things that they've taken to like ninety nine percent of the way, and there's the one part they haven't identified that is such a trivial piece of nonsense that like, and that it stops them from finishing it, and it's like it breaks my heart. 
like me because like that's just not how I operate but I'm like all right I mean if that's how you're gonna like never like I, I know the journey for them is clearly different and that's fine but like I'm a little sad with the homogenization in, at least in the model scene right now where everybody's sort of doing this paint by numbers thing and they're all hitting a target that they've all decided is the target to hit which is like it, I find silly because right. like you're all basing it off of photographs and like secondhand like visual data which is never accurate but they're also like replicating the way these things look now which is incredibly beaten up and faded or, or color skewed and, and like yeah. it, even if you look at vintage photos you have no guarantee that you're looking at the right color you know like unless it's like you know the like we've seen original i'm going to say they're ectochromes or whatever I, i've seen an original medium or large format photo of the falcon from richard edland that he took like you know the year the model was built and it's so bright and vivid and it looks nothing like the five foot falcon does now you know which they clearly repainted at least parts of because they've modified it so much for empire and like it's just it's just a little I, I get a little sad when i see everybody painting everything exactly the same way and somebody asking what they did and they just say i followed this set of instructions i'm like well that's not yeah that's fun. Well, there's so many there's so many things like some of the sabers and stuff where there are stencil kits out there to like recreate yeah, the yeah. and, stuff. and it's like okay that that recreates the stencil or the scratch pattern that was in that photo from the hada book like but that's not what it looked like on set. Like yeah. that's what it looks like now. Like, yeah, yeah. This okay. This jaws great and might be easy, and it's a good path to get something that looks cool. But I feel like, in some ways too, it's it's taken a little bit of the craft out of it. One hundred percent. It's made it more accessible for a lot of people, which is amazing. Yes. But it's also taken some of the craftsmanship that I feel like the early days of the RPF encouraged more of that. Agreed very much agreed this jaws barrel uh somebody found uh or had or bought whatever um a, pr a production barrel because these are really hard to find apparently it says born free on the bottom uh and they made a mold and cast it out of polypropylene so it is essentially the same as the original barrel it's bananas like this is big hollow like barrel and their their concession was that little screw lid uh is part of the the mold itself so you can differentiate this from a real one because you can't take the, the little lid off the top the little screw thing um but he was like hey do you want just a raw barrel or for an extra you know 400 bucks i'll i'll put the rope on and the metal strap and i'll, I'll weather it and it was just like yeah i never get around to it please yeah like this one of those moments where i'm going to farm that out because i don't have a spray booth big enough and i don't want to huff yellow paint for like two days or whatever so he just attacked it, I think, with a chain, like, you know, just hit yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't match the weathering on any of the barrels and shots if you bother to look. But Jesus Christ, Jaws people that see this, like, they're so excited. And that's how I feel when I see it. I'm like, that's a, that's a barrel from the Orca. You know, like, it's a replica. And, yeah. and it very much speaks to what Tom had said. Yeah. Um, in fact, I was talking to Mike Salsa today and he mentioned that that was like his favorite thing from hearing, listening to the, the last one we just did about like the, the intent, the style, like the splattering and stuff. It's like you, you can do the same like method, but yeah. don't try to, I mean, like with Luke's Red 5, there's definite chipping uh, on the top, like flak bursts or whatever on right. the wings. Um, that's pretty easy to replicate because it's pretty stark, you know, like, like brushwork. But yeah. as far as like a wash where you, you, there's video footage, it might be a space shuttle, but Grant McCune like has put something on and then he bombs the surface with, uh, he's spraying like a, a, a very caustic solvent probably with a spray bottle and it's just making the paint move around. Yeah. And it's like, that never could be. Yeah, you can't replicate that. Yeah. Yeah. One of the, I did an early blue one X Wing and, uh, that is also red too. Um, and right around, for whatever reason, the bottom of, uh, underneath the canopy, uh, there's a real mottled kind of uh, tannish, uh, orangish color. And um, I tried to replicate that. And it, it looks like it was broken up a little bit. And I used watercolor and sat there for like three days 
And then I was just like, I'm, it's close enough. Like, Jesus Christ, like mission accomplished. And then I sealed it up and it was good to go. But now I think I would just, you know. Not care as much. and Not care. Get more as accurate. Much. Yeah. Or yeah. more authentic. Like, yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, like my R2 is the same way. Like I, man, I spent two weeks weathering him, but it was, it was all to get him to look like something that went yeah. through the same stuff, not to replicate what was in the show. Yeah. Like and you want to get you want to get that line down from the the droid collar and you know like yeah that's, and that's easy to do like, yeah you need a line down from the droid collar not that line or, from the droid sorry. Collar. restraining bolt shit sorry yeah yeah you threw me off too oh. yeah sorry <laughs> that was Just a test all that out <laughs> yeah. I am totally me yeah yeah restraining um, bolt Jason because <laughs> otherwise we get hate mail it's a restraining yeah. bolt idiot I'm like okay. There. Yeah, I have one of Tom's restraining bolts right here behind the computer, too. I have one on my fridge, so it doesn't run away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, like it, it really is a lot of that. And I, like I've said, like this, this Han Solo style blaster here, this isn't Han's blaster. Like I've never, I was never trying to build Han's blaster. Right. Like that one is Han's. Why would I have Han's? Yeah. Yeah. Like I have one that came off the assembly line after Han's or before Han's. I love I love the discovery of all, that whole that whole sequence of events to get that blaster identified and well, when somebody the, figured out that there's your there's your fire extinguisher nozzle yeah 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 <laughs> and the, the the finding figuring out that it was in that Sinatra film like the bull barrel yeah, make, the like, naked like, runner yeah yeah, yeah naked runner the, does yours have the little toggle switch looking things on it yeah they're off well they broke off okay. <laughs> they're off of the same this bottle kit yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I the, that that little pistons, right? They're little yeah, pistons. Yeah, valve yeah. lifters. Yeah, valve lifters. Yeah. They um, that guy, like the owner of the company, had still had old stock or could still run the molds. He had the molds. Yeah, in his oh, in his shed. Yeah. Wow. I never did get a set of those. Oh, you didn't? I can send you a set. Oh. How many take do you that, want? Take that, listeners. <laughs> they are right there. Yeah. Yeah. Read models. Nice. Is he still doing that? Uh, his, I'm not sure. I Did think his die? son, his son was gonna sell the molds. Maybe mm. somebody was gonna be rerunning parts. Like, but that's nuts. Yeah. So there's that, and then right. That's so great. And there they are. Yeah. So those are those those toggle switch things yeah but, and i uh it's great that it's off of it's a radial airplane engine right yeah yeah so they yep. just right there yeah well, even like that stuff there was a lot of like weird rc stuff i mean the mouse droid like the chassis for the mouse droid is is a super super distinct chassis yeah the whole era of uh stock car racing RC stock car racing. And I found one from a company that is like 90% the same. But I had I had made one from approximations and drawings I had done up cool for that and like brazed all the steel tube together and made a replica of what I thought it was. Wow. I found this vintage one and it was I was dead on on all my measurements, my guesses. So, but I've never found the exact right one huh. I, it, because it was this weird cottage industry of stuff. So, yeah. I, and I think like there were a lot of other RC bits and pieces, I think, showing up in things that they were just going, like there was some shop around the corner from the studio or from in Van Nuys, like they're going to like whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you're up against it sometimes. Like they went yeah. to a, like a surplus place for that specialized in vintage stuff even back then and you're like i'm never finding that oh my god right it was garbage out of the garbage pile back then yeah, like, yeah. the mouse droid is a lot bigger than you think right it is it's pretty good size yeah i, I want to make one of those one day too i think that'd be fun the hardest the hardest part on that are the the chip sockets they're they're weird they're they're like super early integrated chip sockets I feel like I would just print some of that shit and just be. A lot of, it's it's all been pretty well defined. There's a whole mouse droid builders group and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I know. But cool. Um, we should probably wrap it up. I don't want these to be like super crazy long. Um, 
and you please come back. We'll have you again. Um, I really barely talked about anything. I know. Well, that's what happens, but they're great. This will be a great episode. It's funny. Like, I'm like, I think people will really enjoy hearing, like, especially like, yeah, there's so much more I need to, to have you. Well, like, yeah, like, we kind of stopped with my career path around 1990. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, yeah. Oh my God. We never even got to the first Star Wars product I worked on. Like, right. <laughs> We'll have we'll definitely have you back and, and talk a little more about that then. Um, and I really also just want to talk about like all the splinter groups that formed like the the uh, it's triggering a bunch of memories on the RPF like my little thread. Hey, we're doing these videos, and somebody mentioned Doctor Strange loves off topic board, which was when mm-hmm. the RPF got rid of the off topic board. He like everybody threw a fit, and so that you know was made sister board was made. Um, but then a prop blog and yeah, a site about props. Yeah, toys for big boys, the Ronins. Oh man, toys for big boys. All that it, stuff. Yeah, I think, like I, I was on all those boards because like I was on the RPF like pretty much day one. Yeah, and I think I had a, a parts of SW or POSW something or other screen name. But then yeah. when it like the first migration of of the RPF to whatever the second generation was. Yeah, like I like I lost all that and then I, I like I didn't get back on early enough to like get the same thing and like it's, it's a giant mess and then I was Mr. Sparkle from then on. Ah, yeah, Mr. Sparkle you were that's right that's and great. The, the little gif of the thing we get. Yeah. yeah 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 I forgot about that you were Mr. Sparkle that's fantastic wow and then uh they mentioned the voodoo lounge which was Stan's I think that's how you said his name. Oh, see, I was thinking that was Dr. Strangelove, but you're right. It stands. I'm so glad. I just stayed under the radar on all of it. Yeah. I never wanted to, I never wanted to be in this stuff. Like I yeah. Like I made the mistake a couple times of trying to like talk sense into people and like that doesn't happen on the internet. No, no. Like, I made the mistake of just arguing. Like I'm not I'm not a master debater. I'm not like I'm not very good with uh, remembering what somebody said to use against them six months later or whatever like I just I don't care so I was always bringing a knife to a gunfight <laughs> like uh, and yeah and then just after a while it was like I, I, I'm wasting my life doing yeah it, yeah I mean as a has like argued with people on the boards uh yeah there's no advantage to it I mean it's it, it doesn't mean anything it's it's really a waste of time and it's telling that the three of us are still doing this stuff and those guys are just gone. Yeah. Like, it seems anyway. Like, I don't know, maybe they're around. Some of them I physically blocked on Facebook. So I don't know, maybe they're still running around buying uh, kangaroos from Pulp Fiction or whatever, but yeah. <laughs> who knows? That's an awfully random or specific reference there. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah. the there's just this weird level of toxicity that exists sometimes in it. And it's like, I think so much of it comes from the, from everyone's voice on the internet has the same weight. Yeah. And it's like, you can be like the four year old on there, like talking about your mom and like, and like some 60 year old guy will come in and say, Oh no, your mom is this. Like, <laughs> yeah. And, and you're, you're sitting there watching going like, can we get back to talking about Hank's counters, please? <laughs> like, like, I, I came here for that. Thank you. I understand yeah. the Hanksler family had Nazi ties, but that's not <laughs> what I'm here for. I, th- I think the first thing everybody does when they get one of those is change the number to one, one, three, eight. Yep. I know I did. And then accidentally half push the button and it becomes one one three six. No, take it apart again. Yeah, yeah. I had uh, when I made my Luke macros. I I had a the the I opened up the UMIG servomatic. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. I opened it up and I changed the little. There's like a little windage knob with numbers, and uh-huh. I, I very laboriously changed all of that to Arabesh. <laughs> like, wow. Yeah, yeah. I've got a photo of that somewhere. That's yeah. Do you have the do you have the right lenses the calamar calamar 660 lenses yeah oh i've got God. Two, of, two of the real right lenses uh, yeah those those went for crazy money uh, that's, that's over my display cases over there yeah, cool i never that's another one i never finished like so close but then like 
things keep changing and like somebody made like the adapter block for the lens. I was going to say, is it the adapter plate to the, for the flip thing? Well, um, I, I got that. It's all mounted to the camera, but then Travis and I were looking at it not too long ago and realized that that adapter block was made upside down. Oh, no. <laughs> so, so it's got to mount the other way around. So all the holes that are perfectly aligned for holes in the, in the UMIG don't line up with the holes in the UMIG anymore. You got to drill new holes. <sighs> Did they, and they ID somebody ID the little mystery box on the side eventually too, right? Yeah, the mystery box is a is an AV connector. Ha! Huh. Crazy. Wow. Were, were you the one who was it? You somebody recently ID'd all the stuff that went into the little thing that scanner that Lauren holds in the trash can. It, it wasn't me. No, I, I keep getting tempted to buy that stuff, but it's expensive camera equipment. Like, yeah, yeah. Somebody yeah, was right. selling recently a whole set of the like the stuff to do that. I saw that. I was and I was like, maybe I should nope. Like yeah. you build did, models, Jason. Don't thing. don't open that door again. Don't walk through that door. Yeah, but we could put it together and then hand it to Lauren and have him like 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 look yeah. at some in the parking lot. Yeah. 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 Off of Jean's like veranda or whatever. Yeah. Actually yeah. off of Lauren's balcony would be perfect. There's and in this this gray garbage can we just got from Home Depot. And he'd, <laughs> he'd be like, ah, the things I do for you. All right, who's buying it? Yeah. Yeah, right. That's like I built that. Um, you can kind of see it up there in the corner. The um, the the red gantry that's um in the hangar, oh, yeah, yeah. hanging yeah, when, when the falcon there. comes in. And uh, we did the before and after, or then and now picture of John Erland like working on it. Um, because I I <laughs> it was cost me like sixty dollars to ship it to California each way, but to get the joke photo, I was like worth the money, and shipped it there. I should think I shipped it to Craig and he was kind enough to drive it down. Uh, and, and John thought it was the real one, which, you know, is always very complimentary. And I'm like, yo, like, and then immediately I was, his me, yeah, there. immediately like, Ed, Ed, Craig and I, yeah, Ed, Craig and I were like, well, actually this part's wrong. And, uh, and at that point he's just like, all right, boys. But uh, he was very cool to, to, like, to recreate. Oh, recreate the photo. It was pretty, pretty neat. I, I, just little moments like that. Uh, would not have happened without the RPF, you know, like yeah. the sequence of events that lead you to the weirdest stuff. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, I just, I think about like all the, the people from the RPF back then that are still around that I still care to interact with. Yeah. Like, there's a good solid group. And I feel like, like most people from that time frame, like, like, it can be years and yeah. like run into each other at a convention or something. And it's like instantly, like we're down, like we're talking like, yeah. And yeah. well, I, I'd see you maybe once or twice a year, like in non pandemic times anyway, but mm -hmm. you know, Spina, I don't see very often, but like the second we started chatting, it was like no time had passed at all. It's yeah. very cool. Yeah. I, I keep saying this is like the high school reunion. Uh, where you get to invite all the people that you actually liked in high school, <laughs> I, like like it's much more pleasurable <laughs> like, yeah. without, without those pesky jocks in the corner or whatever. <laughs> but like, uh, yeah, yeah, club. yeah, 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 yeah. We're we're definitely the kids with the the film projector. Oh, yeah. yeah, radio club. Yep. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can we have the key to the room? We don't like the lunch room, please. Yeah. <laughs> I I ate lunch in the art room. I had the, the art uh, teacher gave me a key. She was just like, here you go, nerd. I was like, yay. And then and then it turned into like this little like cabal of like eight sarcastic ne'er-do-wells that we would all just huddle in the art room to eat our lunch in like privacy while we listened to a cool mixtape or whatever. <laughs> very, very much like the spirit of the RPF, like a little dank corner for every weirdo to like yeah. sort of well, yeah i think like it still happens too like every celebration i've been to like there's usually like you go to whatever bar is the hangout bar afterwards and it's like you'll find like somebody from the rpf usually tom sitting yeah. there <laughs> sit down and like and just start chatting and, and like so many of us have transitioned into into like real jobs yeah that are still doing the things that we we grew up loving like yeah it's it's the crazy miracle of oh my god what am i doing yeah. like, try, try and tell 10 year old me that i'd be doing this 
Yeah, it's it's heady. It's, it's very heady. Yeah. But like we sit around and we can trade like war stories about about work and like the old times and it is it's no time has passed. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's very cool. Well, right on. Um I think that's a good place to end it. Um these have abrupt endings which I appreciate. So, I'm going to stop the I'm going to say goodbye this time and stop the recording. I, I yeah, <laughs> the, the the fine art of cutting someone off mid-sentence. <laughs> oh my god. All right, cool. All right. I'm stopping the recording and this is going to end very abruptly. Bye -bye.